happening and it's going to be wild. So it's been a long time coming. Oh. I've been waiting for this. Let's test it out. This is it, man. And I, I'm, we saw the home team. We saw the home team. Yeah. Oh, man, the crowd was already behind them. Stockholm, are you with us? There then let's is. get it on the way. Nico, oh, wow, what a beginning. A knockout punch down the middle with a double kill, and the round is done in less than 10 seconds. Wow, that's what you get for booing. That's what no. comes back. G2 thought they were cheering for them. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, awesome. They're cheering for us. Let's go, guys. Oh, <laughs> what a start this is. But this is exactly what I wanted out of both of these teams. What a terrific start. Straight up fight mid. No hesitation. Both teams going for dominance. Both teams trying to have that strong start where they're just like, let's fight. Like, why are we going to wait around? Let's just go and fight. Let's go. And if, I mean, it, I think this is like a psychological thing as well. When the crowd boos you, you want nothing more than to show them that they're wrong and fight back. And that's dangerous, especially with a team like G2. Certainly had their own stumbles, certainly had their own problems, but um, off to a pretty hot start. Second round is coming up though. Seeing a buy out of NIP. They could be dangerous on this map. The Eagles, C set 75 on Plopski as well. And they're expecting a push out of G2. They're being, they're, they've sent Device out. Said, Device, you do your thing. This is a major. Go find a kill. Device, go kill. It's like, a good strategy. Uh, yeah, this is a good strategy. It works pretty well in the past, although the desk have brought up a couple of points that we need to keep in mind, i.e. he needs to show up and start playing that star role for True. NIP, right? Because it's kind of been a little bit middling. And so he's still trying to find his footing, it feels like, on this team where he can really take control and just start getting those MVP medals again. So I'm curious to see how Device shapes up here. And then the rest of NIF right now, well, it's just a core moving forward, death ball approach. G2 are getting wind of this, though. They have rotated Nico back over. It's not going to be just one player on that B-bomb side. Now there's two, soon to be three. Uh, the longer NIF wait, the more brutal this is going to get. Yeah, they have a pretty good read on what's happening at the moment. They're not feeling any pressure in apps or even at Arch at the moment. Device is kind of going to be showing up. He has a smoke that he's just put out. That's a classic smoke for an A apartment's pop. So he's trying to sell them this idea. Oh, maybe it could still be coming to the A bomb side. But really, we can tell they're all going to be showing up. They've actually pulled Jax back. So that's a little bit of worrying. Nico, good kill. But he is very low on health. He re -peaks for more. Might want to leave some of this to next. So he's going to go down. Nico will follow next. Big entries this time for NIP. And they're going to be at least in a three on three here. The bomb is being planted. And. It's not in the default position, so the spray fails. Oh, he nearly walked into it. One bullet would have done the trick there. He would have been out of the fight. And now that bomb gets planted. This is already a huge success for NIP. They're in a position to win it. Look at Hampus. He's made a giant trek around. What a mad play. This is a one in a, in a thousand. If this works, he could end up winning the round, just shooting him in the back. And they're really slowed down. Here comes Hampus, one missed opportunity. They do spin back for him, but in a lot of trouble out there. Jackson will win the fight against Device, and now it's a two on three. That bomb is so far ticked, they know where Hampus is, and he can't land the shot. It's gonna be G2 straight onto the bomb. They do not have a kit, though. That's dangerous. Did they leave it too late? Jax is right on it. Oh, that is a last second defuse, and G2 will only barely make it out of that round. Go away, that is so close in that second round. Hampus just bought barely enough time. That's all he needed to do, getting the kills regardless. If it was just buying enough time to keep them off of that defuse, they could have won the round in IP. That could have been it. What right, a sure. close call. But also, that quick rotation from G2, that speaks to nerves, Anders. They yep. were so fast to rotate on that smoke. As soon as they saw that smoke, already they're peeling defense off the B site. They hit that timing impeccably. They caught them out of position. I think you're right, because that's not a lot of a sell, right? We don't normally think of one smoke on a bomb site as a big indication that you should be rotating. So yeah, maybe a little bit too aggressive on that one. I've got to say, though, you're right. I mean, if Hampus hits that shot coming up behind, that's probably at least, it should be the round, could at least get a little bit closer. But unfortunate moment. They put an AK on res and then decals on everyone else. That's obviously based on the bomb plant. So an interesting way to try to optimize this kind of a round. They're saying, if, if we lose this round, all right, Venus will be lacking some of the next round, but everyone else can buy. So exactly. I am kind of okay with this. Miners getting the short end of the stick on this deal. And yeah, I'm, I don't a little bit. think that they managed to spot out the fact that they saw one on high. I don't think they saw Hunter up there. So that was a cool setup from G2. It's not every day that you see overlapping layers of defense on short like this. So that is really neat. I don't think that Nip spotted it though. But Nip, now that they've shown some presence top mid, they're like, okay, fair enough. We can rotate over towards B, we can start taking over Banana, and we can just try and crash into this bomb site and see if we can uh, crack it open. A little bit uh, worried about that bomb lingering behind. Just one shot and that's it, your whole round could be ruined. 
But now Nipper gathered up and things are about to be spicy. Oh, that is yes. a peak and a half from Nico. He was already low on health, but they nearly lined up. He actually gets that Tinker device through the coffins as well. And I believe it at 27 seconds with not much of a chance here for NIP to really do anything. They needed that clean entry on the B bomb side. They needed to wreck Nico in that position. And instead, comes up for his team once again. Walks in for one more kill. The spray is there. Next, uh, oh, knives are out. He's hunting him down. <laughs> well then. A little bit of a chuckle. You can see they're not taking it that too seriously. But I, Nico showing up right out the gates already. I'll take that as a sign of dedication for how much he wants to win this quarterfinal. And also humiliate them. Yeah. If, he can humiliate, if you can get in Nip's head right now, Nip are by no means stable going into this best of three. There's a lot of questions nope. around this roster and what they can do, and especially whether or not they're going to be able to stand up under the pressure. So a lot going against Nip here, and it's all going to be about them getting the ball rolling early. And so if you can get in their heads early and just start smashing them and bullying them right out the gates, it's only going to make life harder for NIP. Ooh, they got another bomb plant, so they're able to to continue the buy here. They've said, I mean, for, for losing three rounds in a row, NIP have been, at least on the economic front, fairly competitive in the early uh, first part of the half here. So that's kind of good news. Now we just need to see them build some rounds behind it. Heavy bombardment of banana from the from Jesus point of view. And then some spray to follow it up there. Oh, the device just at the end, sending out a last volley to take down Nexa. Good start. Ah, there we go. The crowd comes alive with that one. Nice little dance for, from Nico, jumping up, changing the angle. See if this works. He has that AK saved, and he is looking for it. Not quite going to find the shot, though. But he does get some information. And Amanek posted up with the AWP. There's the shot. Beautiful work. Takes Rez out of the picture. Four on four take now. Nip wrapping on the A site. Yeah, good rotation this time. And look at Nico, he's walking up behind them, flanking them. Oh, the taps are in! What a triple kill! Taking down Device, Plopsky and Hampus at the top of mid. And they'll find Linus as well. Not only did they go for the three-man stack at A in a four and five, but Nico flanking them and tapping them away. This is an amazing way to begin. And like you said, just try it as much as you can to cripple NIMP right at the start. Make sure they feel as bad as they possibly can in front of the home crowd. That's got to be the way to go here. 4 and 0 in their favor. And those, only Nico. You could, you could, some, certain players you can just watch and you're like, that's Nico. Yeah. You know their aim. You know what like their style it's is. True. And that's just so clean. And if Nico, he's just been like, I've been waiting two years for this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm here. Brings out the bat, just starts going to town. I mean, those were some sick headshots from Nico. What a flank. He's not showing any fear at all. He wants to take the oh. fight to NIP and establish dominance right out the gates. Ah, sick. That is such a bold move. Normally, you would just rotate three to A. You would leave the guy at top banana to just take a peek and look at what's happening. That kind of move takes all of the initiative away from NIP. Suddenly, they're not the ones attacking, but they're just getting shot in the back. It's absolutely wild to see. Now, we've got a Tech Nine, a Galil, and a couple of Eagles in play. Jack's already pushing to take down Hampus, and the bomb is quite far back. So this is a round where NIP really just want to try and see if they can get any kind of map control, and then they'll make up their minds later on. I don't think they have a set plan from here. I love Just, it. I love this so much because there you go. I mean, they're bullying them. Going really after a banana like that, it's just bullying. It's just like, you know what? We know you have pistols. We're not going to show you any respect. In fact, this is our server. Get out of here. That is sick from G2. 4-0 now. They have a Galil still on Plopsky, so we can see. I mean, a rifle could do a little bit of damage. But this is an eco round after all here from NIP. They're really trying to gear up for the following round where I feel like they should have a set piece or something that they can just kind of get in motion and start executing against G2. Yeah, and this Galil and the AK in the previous round, they're like little tickets that NIP are trying to buy themselves to maybe get into. It's like, maybe if we get the Galil, the one AK, yeah. we could do something. I think it's a cool idea. I mean, it says something about their mentality at the beginning of this game, sort of, even if we're a little bit down, let's try and optimize every single position. Every time, if there's a chance, maybe we could do something. They're just getting shut down so hard that you're not really feeling the effect of it right now, but you understand the logic. There's a lot of problems that are building against NIP right now. He's actually ready for the boost. Nico, he just sees everything. Absolutely outrageous. That was 11 kill to two deaths. Hit four rounds into the game. <laughs> and what are you going to do against that? He is so far ahead of you right now. And Linus just trying to put some shots through that smoke, hoping to get lucky. With 15 seconds left, he needs to go around the corner and die at this point. You need to make sure that you die in this round. And there we go. Sure enough, he was hoping for the lucky headshot. Next, it takes him out of the fight. There are some G2 fans in the audience after all. <laughs> <Brain>. And <laughs> we have 
a 5-0 lead now for G2 on the CT side of Inferno. But this isn't, this is the beginning. This is still very much the beginning. And now NIP, this is what they've been saving for. Device has the AWP, they have full nades. Now let's see what they can bring to the table. So far, NIP as a whole have four kills between all of the players, and we're just now starting in the sixth round. So I'm assuming mm. that that is going to change. That's going to have to be different, right? Just the raw output on that front will have to be upgraded quite a bit. Now let's see what they could do. Aminek is sneaking down the middle. This is a cool position, but Jax has gone down. Hunter is still pushing. Nico will find a kill, even while flashed in. Oh, caught with a nade in hand. He's going to leave for another second. Device will take him down. And is still a three on three. Device is sneaking out. He's got to be careful here. Nico, he could have a one way looking over that smoke, but Device, he sees it coming. It's not enough. Nico will still take him down. And now it's a three versus two. The bomb is really far back. This is such a struggle for NIP. G2 are just not playing. This is a completely different G2. Keep in mind, G2, this, they, it's their T sides that have been doing the majority of the work for them so far this tournament. That's where they excel. The CT sides, it's a little bit of a struggle. Here we are. They're fixing to get six rounds on the board unless something magical can happen here from NIP. Amanek, this is it. Nice jiggle peek from Rez. Baits the shot, gets the info. They haven't committed just yet. There's still time on the clock, so that was nice. Wow. Yeah. NIP are still in the doldrums here trying to find their way out. They really are. They're going to be up against Nico. He's already got a double. Are they going to feed him any more kills? No, Linus with the return. And that is a huge opening. They're going to go and get that smoke on the cross flash just to be absolutely sure. But we can tell. Amanek and Nexa are going to be running down the middle instead. So the rotation is going to be really far. They do have a smoke on Amanek, but here's the problem. There is a Molotov on Linus as well. If they use that smoke incorrectly, that is not going to work out well. Linus pushing up. He turns for the flashbang. Straight headshot to take down Nexa. And such a good beginning here. Amanek now on his own. He's Molotov out, flashed out, and finally killed Linus with a triple in the round. Bringing him back, the young kid on the team, and he gives them the first round for NIP. And that is I mean, the sixth man for NIP here. Every time something goes right for NIP, the roof is going to get blown off of this place by all the fans. Just getting hyped in here. Yeah. All the NIP fans. That is sick, and Nip can rely on that. So you have these rounds where Nip are going to come through, and the whole place is going up, and this is where it's going to be a true test of G2's mentality. Can they withstand that pressure? I mean, they're going to be thinking right now, we have a huge opportunity right here to mentally reset them immediately. Nothing worse, even with this economy, to, to win a round and then go straight back to losing. You want to you build on that if you're on the NIP side. And it starts out well. Wall bang up in the hallways. Res from the bridge to take down Hunter. Wow. That is unlikely. That is so rare. That is so rare that that actually works. All right, Nip's starting to get a couple of breaks their way here. That's shaping up nicely, and now Device, he's got the angle, looking up, and Anna misses the shot. Nico, he's too quick. A nice HE to ring Mamanex Bell. He's got the AWP as well here to back Nico up. This one-two combination, we've been seeing it more and more from these teams. It's so good. Oh. And there's the timing from Amanek. That is such a perfect flashbang, but Amanek is just ignoring it. It's like, I'll eat that and just, just get the timing right anyway. Now, Rez is in an interesting position, but it's being covered as well. Amanek is everywhere. That is such a good kill. If he had made his way past, it would have been a nightmare for that eight defense. But now instead, they have a pretty good setup. Linus and Hampers, two versus four, and they're about to get flanked. Jax walking up behind them just as they're setting up. There's one kill in the follow-up. They only take down Hunter in the round, and G2 are gonna be up six to one in their favor. Absolutely stunning beginning. Nico has 14 kills. It's outrageous. That is so crazy. Considering going into this, he was already rocking a 1.38 rating across four maps. To be fair, small sample size, you know, sure. G2 did just plow through the legend stage. Just super solid play from them, so we don't get to see too much off of it. But I mean, Nico is already popping off there. I think Nico really, it is his time. He's just trying to make a statement here saying, you know, everybody's talking about everybody else here, but I am still very much a threat. You need to take me into account. And right now, Nip don't have an answer. He is, he is making an incredible case for himself right now. And just D2 in general, I mean, Amanek, we've had some questions around him and his consistency, but this ability right here, one shot while flashed, another one rotating back to catch the pirate arch. Those are really, really important kills. And now NIP back to pistols. They've got some nades to work with, but it's questionable whether or not they could do anything in this round. What a brutal start. You, you, you're in front of the home where you saw the reception that they had. You, you, all the pressure's on you. 
And obviously it's a best of three, so that is the good news. And it's only the first half still, but you want to see them try and turn this around as quick as possible. Nico playing a bit of an off angle. Kamenek here to catch all the attention. And that is a one-two punch that works really well, especially when they don't have a lot of nades to throw at you. Exactly right. When they're light on the utility, no flash to get around that corner with 45 seconds left and Nipper bumping into each other. They don't know what they want to do. If it's backing off towards A or committing to B, there are now there's a triangle of doom set up now on this B bomb side for G2. They've got three players with crossfires just ready. Nipper gonna walk into the blender here in a second. Molly over the top. There's a flash that they managed to find, but they need to find some kills. Oh, it's so unlikely. 25 seconds. Good shot down here. Nexa. Excellent shots. And Nico will find another one. Seven to one. Might be time soon for some kind of a tactical timeout here for NIP to take a deep breath because obviously they've come incredibly well prepared for this game. It's not like they don't have uh, any idea what they want to do, but we need to see some results here because this first half is not going their way. They are one of those teams that has all the printed out notes. You know, you know that threat is going to be thorough in his preparation. He's going to have yeah, it all lined sure. out for the team, just being like, here is what we know on these guys, this is what they're doing, tendencies, etc. And so you know that Nip have a game plan. And this is their T side of Inferno. And it's a point that Thorin brought up on the desk going into this, is that this is the weak side for NIP. They have been struggling to close things out on the T side of Inferno lately. So it's a really, it's about as hard a start as you can get for the Ninjas. So right now they need to show some grit and some determination to hang in this because it's, it's going against them, but they can still stick together on this. Oh, look at the setup here at the top mid. They haven't shown it yet. Nip yeah. haven't seen this yet, so you can just rinse, repeat. And it's very hard to break. I think that this can definitely be done if you show them the right Molotov over the building and then the right flashes from middle. That three-man setup at quad could really be broken up. There's one of the Molotovs actually. Rez trying to do it, trying to push it out. It's going to put some pressure on. Flashes himself into it, but the problem is there's so many people here. He's going to get traded all day. Nico on the other side. Still a three-on-three, three, but... Yeah, you could see how effectively that can trade there for G2. Could have probably even done even better. Next, are on the other side of the smoke. Some shots are coming through, but they're not quite connecting. The bomb has been picked up now. All the way in second middle, 40 seconds left. What are they going to do here in IP? They need to make up their minds. Nico's rotated back to the B-bomb site now. And we've seen this before. Single smoke across. Yep. Is there, are they, you know, same reaction. Same reaction from Nico. He's already rotating. Oh, yeah. They're a little bit quick. Nexa, though, at the back of the bomb site, he's going to be on his own. That smoke is up. And Nico, do you want to risk it and walk through? 20 seconds on the clock. You have to help your teammate somehow. 18 seconds now. They're trying to find Nexa. Oh, and he shoots at his teammate. Nico, though. Oh, oh, the clicks are in. What a double kill. Now it's 10 seconds. He has to find the bomb here. And Amanek is rushing towards him. He can't fake it. Amanek knows it as well. Just running closer. He's almost got him locked in. And Plopski, this one kill, you desperately need it. Amanek just holding the corner on the other side with that AWP. He wants him to peek him. Now he has got a Molotov, but Plopsky, he's allowed to walk back. He's trying to play this as deep as he can. He peeks in, but Amanek will take him down. Another successful kill for the French sniper. And it will be an eighth round for G2. And Nexus just has to make our lives interesting, doesn't he? Headshot Nico as Nico pushes through the smoke. Doing everything he can to help Nip. And Nico's like... It doesn't even matter if you're shooting at me as well. I'm still going to get mine every round. And he still gets those clicks, man. His headshots are so clean and crispy. He's 19 and 4 in nine rounds of game. That is so disgusting. This might be the performance of the major so far. Oh. I don't know if anybody's topped this kind of, this it's kind of shaping performance. Up. That's now, insane. This is obviously a huge throwback, but there definitely was a point in time when Nico and Simple were the, was the, the sort of conversation for who was going to be top in the world, and it wasn't it wasn't exactly clear at that point. So it's been a long while, and obviously Nico's had a, an interesting career going through many, many different teams where he's been sort of the, yeah. the lead performer, yeah. right? But this kind of performance, I've got to be honest, I was not expecting. It's crazy to see this. This is the throwback major in many, many ways. That's a very good way to put it, Anders. We're seeing him just kind of, you know, to steal Hank's uh, line, uh, roll back the years. Yes. Because uh, that is... A star level performance coming out of Nico. Utterly dominant. It's exactly what G2 need from him. Jax looking to get frisky in second mid, though. And what is this? Hunter. Flake out of nowhere. Catches two. He was so out in the open. That looked like an, an unwinnable position. He's going to keep pushing. That is Mad very Mad. greedy. And now the question is can they win this three on three? They've had this position many times in IP. It's not like they've just always been shut down, but they have to convert it into something big here. Nice shot from Amanek again. They're trying to hunt him down, but he has been on point every single time. 
and they can't chase him down. A double kill again, leaving Device on his own. With over a minute, he's going to be found by Nico, of course. And it will be another round for G2, nine to one in their favor. They do have a little cheering section right in front of them there, G2. I'm, I'm noticing quite a bit of noise coming from over there. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see the French flag. There's a couple French flags in the mix. There's seven people fighting the rest of them. <laughs> I mean, uh, enemy this... territory, but uh, that doesn't scare them. Nine to one, Anders. Utterly dominant CT side so far from G2. They're just knocking, well, they're knocking Nip out. They're throwing haymakers. And these ones are connecting. Nico's got 20 kills now. Yep. Danny's uh, weak at the moment. You could you could tell this is this is hurting. Dualies, Tech 9, C set, and a Deagle. Anything you could get at this point. If this is what it takes to win a random round, go for an explosion, pop, flash out the middle, and just try and see if you can get anything on the board because you need it desperately. It's a good start. Hampus with the headshot. Jax, he's actually getting dinked up as well. They could maybe run him down. He's trying to stay out of the line of fire and waiting for his teammates. He does make it into the pit. It's a strong position here, but they're all coming for him, running him down. Jax will stay alive for a while longer. But that grenade from Device did do the job. And another headshot from Hampus. It is looking good. Nexor is on his own. One versus two. The bomb is planted finally as well. He's running onto the site, but running out of bullets at the same time. He sprays and takes down Device. Has a chance for a reload. He's read it. He's got it! What a clutch from Nexa! A one versus two that he ends up winning for a triple kill overall. And it is 10 to 1 in favor of G2. Wow kind of at a loss of uh, what to say right now. They cannot seem to get anything to go their way right now in IP. If it can go wrong, it is going wrong. Their hidden shots, that A take was nice, was clean. Just not able to connect with Nexa in the end. So well done. Yeah, he had such a good read on that one. And the fact that he had time to reload is... And I the mean, level change. Yeah. That's the thing, jumping up on that scooter. Uh, it's brutal. It just, that, just that level change is enough to throw off Rez's aim. It's all in the details. And a nice little HE down to dust Blobsky up and Banana. Device has got the AWP once more. There really aren't many silver linings at the moment either. Just look at the look at the cash that's on G2. We're not even in a situation where you say, oh, but one round. Yeah. And then they could roll it into something. It's not really happening at the moment. Exactly. What a devastating beginning. This is about as rough as it can get here for NIP. The only way it would get rougher is if it was 11 0. That's 10 1. And um, this oh, man. is still just shaping up. We're going to get Hampus trying to clear. He's, now they're worried about that boost. So they're going to have to try and commit to take to checking that to make sure that G2 haven't set that trap again. Yeah, and they used Molotovs and everything else. The only really cool thing right now for G2 would be if they actually went and checked if they're still top mid. Maybe not right away, but in the next 20 seconds. If they could do that. If NIP decide to fall back to B, it would be such a next level call. So let's just see if they're going to be able to do it. They do have a bunch of people over at the pit. So, so sometimes you can flash away around the corner, go see who's actually there. It looks like NIP getting a bit of love from the crowd now as well. That's probably what they need. There we go. But look at the clock, look at the timer. 30 seconds on it, setting up for a full on execute. They're going to be running into a three-way crossfire. This could be an absolute slaughter as they come around. They're going to have to be some god-tier flashbangs to make this work. Or a good entry for Device. With the AWP to take down Jax, it's a beginning. 15 seconds on the clock. They're going to get Nexter as well inside of the bombsite. Oh, it's Nico on the cross and Hunter inside of it. Great headshot to bring it through. And now seven seconds on the clock. They're going to have to go for the bomb plant. They can't delay it any further. And Nico out in the open. He's going to be found by Plop Scheme. Amanek. He's not got any nades, otherwise he could probably get the kill on one of them. And he's stolen a couple of rounds from them already. If he does it again, it's almost too much. That shot misses and he's gonna get sprayed as a second one for NIP. This time Plotsky with a triple and NIP better late than never. NIP, the whole name of the game here is weathering the storm because their CT side on Inferno is solid. We've seen them get dominant CT halves. They just need to focus on getting the remaining rounds in this first half. Get five rounds on that T side in this first half, and then you're, you can do something with that in the second half if you're an IP, because yes. they do have a solid CT side to fall back on on this map. You just have to deal with Fico, who seems to only be able to hit headshots. Apart from that, you're good. I mean, yeah. I can Hunter, though, getting frisky in mid. Love this, taking it back. Hunter spraying them down. The grenade probably would have killed one of them anyway. 
It's a big double kill, and he just escapes. He's just running up banana instead of running back. He's like, ah, I'm out. It's amazing that they, I mean, they call that kind of power play immediately after Nip went around, and G2 are thinking, well, Nip are thinking, great, we can start to get the ball rolling. G2 are like, not about that. We're actually just going to bully you again. Yeah, it, I mean, you can, they know where they have them right now. G2 themselves have been on the other side of this equation many, many times before, so they know what it feels like when you're not giving any any space to breathe, right? Anything you're trying, you have to always think about, well, while we're setting this up, are they going to be crazy? Are they going to be rushing down banana or even down middle this time? And the answer is yes. They're going to keep the pressure on every single round. Hampus is low on health. Hunter is a little bit tagged up as well. They're going to try and take the fight. Oh, look at this. They're going to go check. This is so smart. They're going to know everything turning this corner and a really good information play. You see the rotation. Unlike earlier when they rotated a little bit blind G2 to a single smoke this time, they know everything. They've got this on lockdown. It's going to be a three-man setup at the B bomb site. Molotovs are raining in. There is no way that NIP should win this round right here. Amanek is smoked off. That's a bit annoying, but all the way at the back of the site is Nico. Only the one kill this time, but Amanek sees an opportunity, and he's going to get it with Hunter closing out the round. And that is the power of that three-man setup, 11 to 2. Just trading, trading, trading. So long as one of those CTs is getting a kill, you just keep whittling down that offense. They're going to run out of bodies before you do. And so that is just textbook stuff from G2. The power play, that's the thing we can't forget. They start that off with a mid push <laughs> and Hunter gutting two of them. That's how that round starts. And then you still have to deal with Nico, you still have to deal with Amadek, you still have to deal with the rest of G2, who are still waiting on that bomb site. So NIP now, two rounds on the board, looking for a third. Nico definitely just <laughs> cheer now. Yeah. I mean, if you play like this, you have every right. To be fair, you guys should be cheering right now. If you're Nip fans, you should be cheering right now. They need your energy. They do. They desperately do. They really need your energy right about now. Because this is it. Nip, they've got two rounds on this T side. Backs to the wall in this first half. There it is, the Nip chant. Let's go. Oh, that nearly was a headshot. On, maybe it even was on Amanek. That did a lot of damage with the Mac 10. Are they going to try and speed it up? Hampus is in Arch. He's in so deep. Jax is going to go down. That's a big start. Hunter inside of the bomb site. He's splashed. He can't see anything. And he gets caught. Rests with a kill. And they've got this on lockdown. G2 are walking away. It is going to be a third round for NIP. Man, did they need it. Oh, Nico with an AK is bad news bears, but I <laughs> yeah, guess you'll we'll just have to, to accept him. that. I guess you'll we'll just have to accept that in favor of picking up a round. NIP, you want to keep your guns alive. You recognize that you two are going to get a buy round in the next. They'll have enough to drop around a couple of guns here. Did Jax not have any head armor? It looked, uh, he looked like he got gooshed. He looked like he died real quick. If that's true, maybe it's not you know, the, the, the biggest thing, but it is a detail that's worth pointing out. We'll have to go back and check. I feel like he died so quickly that he probably did not have that. But yeah, turns out the solution to the trouble for NIP are just Mac 10s. Who would have thought? Explosive. Change the pace. If you're going too slow with the AKs, we saw this earlier as well, where you can just go three Mac 10s, which for you know heroic, right? And just be like, all right, now we're just gonna accelerate immediately onto a bomb site and just try and swarm the defense as fast as possible. It is a thing, and well, NIP for them it worked wonders. G2 because they keep three alive. They have rifles. They have nades. They should have everything they need in this round to be a real threat. It's so interesting because one of the common ways in which you get really shut down on the T side of Inferno is that you can't win the fight for Banana. But I feel like NIP have actually done that a fair bit. It's very often in three on three. But it's just that when Nico has this kind of an output, he can, he can relax in the bomb. So he's like, yeah, you can have Banana, but every time you show up at B, I'll get a double kill. Yeah. And half the time, otherwise, they run into Amanex AWP, and then it's not a three on three anymore. So yeah, they keep having Banana, but it's not enough. Nico now hiding on the other side, Popski. He must have seen something or heard something there. He definitely knew. All right, but that's three people that are committed to the B defense right now. If NIP could somehow figure this out, or even if they just went for it at the A bomb site, it would be a very good call. They started to make a little bit of noise towards mid. Exactly, Hampus has cleared that out. He's got the help of Rez with him. Am and I getting forced off the angle. Nico's on his own, looking for a fight. And they have no nades. They have no nades to, to, to help take this. Yeah, that's a big problem. <laughs> they have it, one flash, one flash, and Nico's a dead man. Yeah, they had even a little bit scared of him, perhaps. I'm like, you know what? It's not worth it. Now, what NIP did have, even through all of that, was a lot of time on the clock, which they still technically do. 45 seconds, they're set up, one good flash into the pit, and they win this round. This is really hard to deal with. Jax, he's already flashed. Amanek 
follow-up. The nades are so good, but no one's pushing behind because the Molotov is down in front. They couldn't capitalize on it. They had all of the right flashbangs and none of the kills. 30 seconds now. Lobsky's waiting as they're coming up behind. He reads it really well, but Jax on a triple kill, hiding inside of the smoke for the reload. Hunter's down there, and it's going to be 12 to 3 in favor of G2 in that first half. The pit position held strong. They had all the nades they needed. They just could not push. And playing not next to Broken Wall, but behind Cart as well. Both of them stacked up. So difficult for Nip to read that situation, knowing that if somebody is there or not. Nip were even ready for the flank. Nip were even ready for the flank, but it wasn't enough. And so now, Nip have the true test ahead of them here. How good, just how good, is their CT side on Inferno? We've seen it do tremendous things in the past here in this tournament. We know that they're sharp on it, but they've got a long journey ahead of them here. The fans are all here cheering for them as well. And <laughs> it is their moment to shine. They, it's their time to step up. Nico's even <laughs> calmed down, and it's only got 23 kills. It's outrageous, absolutely outrageous. What a performance from Nico. Opening game of him here at the, uh, the quarterfinals, and he is 23 and 8 going into the second half. Pistol round is coming up, and a chance for NIP to try and redeem themselves. Like you said, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to come up with something spectacular here on the second half. It can be done, and it has been done before. But man, what a lockdown we're talking about. Rez is playing on his own. They've gone for a gamble. This is not a sign of desperation. Actually, a fairly common pistol round on Inferno, so I wouldn't read anything into this. But he's on his own with no needs. He's all in here. If they pop around the corner with a flashbang, he's going to have to fight everyone, probably while flashed at the same time. Rez, just show us what you've got. USP in hand, shoulder peak. That's a good start. Headshot. We're going to need about two or three more of those. He's trying for it, but not going to get it. They'll find a way to take him down. Jax with the return. And they've called Hampus over on this side, but they don't really want to escape that A-bomb side. They've only showed one. They've only showed one. That's the thing. And True. I don't know if that's intentional or not, because the spacing was weird, but Jax is the only one took, who took that fight. And so they don't have the info right now, Nip. They don't know if this is still going to be an A hit. Oh, that's Nate a sick is name. real good. That will do some damage. And they're going to commit to it here. Hampus, he's setting up a flash. He's a madman running right through, but they're coming in through the smoke on the other side. They're so low on help, and Hampus, what a brilliant play. Knife is out. No, surely not. And it's going to be device to take down Hunter. Well played on Hampus. There you go. The nade and the double kill, that held strong. And I think he might have been onto something. That is a good point, right? They didn't show almost anyone at Top Banana. It was just Jax. And I was like, why are they so staggered? Why this? They're just putting faith in Jax to win that duel. Because if he gets that kill, they don't have any information. And there's a golden way onto that site. So NIP, they've taken the first step in this second half. They've won the pistol round. Now they need to convert that into the second round here. It's a good chance that they do so because G2 Without a bomb plant, they're going for the hard eco. They're trying to save as much money as possible for the next round. So good on G2 and well, good on Nip, really. They have a golden opportunity to get for them to start bullying G2. Yeah, careful now, device. Yeah, don't get don't don't get bullied in turn. Yeah, but you're right. This is a good beginning, especially like you said, no bomb plant. Time to take a deep breath. It it's not that easy to shake off a 12-3 first half. It's going to take a while before you get back into it. Yes. So right now, it's just a classic classic mantra. We saw Nantu backstage earlier. He came up with it one round at a time. That's the mentality, right? Don't think about the future. Don't think about the scoreboard. Just think about the next round and try and get there. That's exactly it. I mean, they, they what, 14-1 to Stralis. They played Astralis on Inferno. So, I mean, they, they, they can definitely, and that's not, the, that's not the only one off the top of my head, but like, that's not the only time that Nip have just gotten the lockdown on CT side Inferno. So they have a good feel for this map. It's just about, you know, just one round at a time. That's all they need to think. Strong crossfire here, at least it should be. Yeah, everyone's showing up. They lock it down. There they lose a single player. The device with a triple. Small, slow steps in the right direction here. Now, I will say something. Unlike the first six or seven rounds where NIP hardly had any kills, at the end of the half, they actually caught up pretty well in terms of kills. They were starting to have a more of an output. So that's kind of one block in the, in the building here that, that can be put in. At least that part is working. Now, we'll have to see. AK is on the side of G2. They know as much as anyone. They just need four more rounds, and they will put that first map on the board. So let's see if they can find a way to do that as well. They're pushing up an honor initially. The nice thing for G2 is that they have yet to play Inferno on the Legend stage. They have not. So they're going into this. There's no 
fresh tape for NIP to go off of True. going into this that could help them figure out what G2 have in store for them on the T side. So G2, there's the element of surprise here that Nip have to consider, where Nip will have been figured out because they've played Inferno a couple times now and there's some info to go off of. Nip are flying blind right now. Bob scheme. that's a deep push. What a jump! Oh, and a flashbang to follow it up! Big double kill for Plomsky. You could tell Nico, he knew, he wasn't sure about the timing. And the flying MP9 comes through. That is probably one of the most frustrating ways to die in a game yeah. of Counter-Strike. And Nexus, just that's the worst part as well, where it's like you're trying to help your mates out, so you throw a flash in, and it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna help you, and then you end up blinding them. It's just the worst case scenario there for everybody, basically, on the side of G2. And even worse, they upgrade for an AK, right? So they, they get the money and then even more. This is a tough round for G2. Three versus five. They're starting to see if they can wrap around. I mean, this is a great way if they could do it. If they can sneak Amanek in here, the device is covering that crossfire. Goes for it. Nice shot from Amanek. That'll take device out of the picture. 28 seconds. Plopsky on a flank. That means at least they know for sure this is going to be an A hit. And it shouldn't be successful, but maybe it will be. Rez goes down next. Hampus! What a flick from Hunter! Takes him right down. And now they have the pit, they have the bomb site. Plopsky and Linus, two versus three to try and go for the retake, but Plopsky's down to one health. They're gonna have to call it off. It's 13 rounds for G2. What a shock. What a round. What a round from these three players. They each got a kill and it just makes all the difference. And I don't even know if I want to really criticize the NIP for it, but that is the downside of playing that far back, right? Yes. They, they end up taking three individual fights. There's no chance for any refracts or anything. And NIP are just kind of waiting. But then again, they're in a five versus three. So they're not expected to be the ones to go aggressive and look for really anything. What a shocking turnaround for G2. That is very, very hard. So they made it look easy, but that is a hard round to win. Looking a little pensive on the side of uh, NIP right now. Yeah, well, who can blame them? <laughs> what, what a start. Do what, what you a start. Can to save, do what you can to save the, the, the weapons and get the gear for the next round. And this is a replay here. Fox needs perspective. I mean, it's a perfect start to the round with that shutdown on Banana. But Hunter is ridiculous. Yeah, that flick was something. Right, well, this is going to be it now for NIP. If they lose this round, their economy is going to be in tatters, and G2 are in a position to win this first map of the best of three. Nice, HE over the top. Nico already getting tagged. Oh, 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 this is sick. That's a deep boost. Flashbang actually lands on top of the half wall. That's pretty cool. Some nades being exchanged. Popsky will take a bit of damage behind that one. But yeah, just the standard yep. Inferno Banana stuff going on. Just the games within games. Where are you just trying to predict where they are? Nico, gotta be careful. The problem for NIP though is that's a lot of their needs. They have got no Molotovs. They've got three smokes. One of them just went down to the bottom of Banana. But they need to find a way. Maybe they could rotate Hampus over or he can sort of run over and throw down a smoke for them so they can keep that smoked off because otherwise they're not going to have enough. There's still a minute on the clock here. NIP. I love the fact that Hampus is playing this corner. This is one of the things that they were missing in the earlier round. He's just looking. He just wants to know now. He's going to get smoked off, but still just having that little bit of information is worth a lot. They are pretending like they're clearing top mid, which currently they're not yet doing. Oh, that's a nice spray. Jax nearly out of the round. They're going to start to fall back. Plopsky's playing it on his own over here, though. He's got the early spot, but Linus has rotated back over towards A, or at least he was thinking about it. He's in CT spawn right now, so there is a gap. There's a window here for G2 to exploit. Flash over the top as well, so they're about to start this push, G2. Ooh. Oh, he gets caught. The timing on the jump. It's so ridiculous. If he's timed better like that, he's going to spot them way at the bottom and they can't catch him, but that is just a coin flip and he happens to be behind the wall when they make a one for it. Linus comes in, that's a strong headshot. He actually spins around to take down Jax. Eight seconds on the clock. They need that bomb plant right now. Could someone stop it? They need to the kill. There's Hampus. He might save them in this round and he will. Kill on Nico. Amanek on his own, miles away. A desperate round for an IP by the skin of their teeth. And once again, Linus coming up with the goods. He's had some big rounds this tournament for NIP so far. He's come through in the clutch for his team. And without those two kills there, I find it hard to believe that G2 are gonna get a bomb plant. Linus just came up in spades for the ninjas. Yeah, and honestly, even with the time that was left, that looked like it was oh, not the right move. It looked like he actually could have sacrificed himself for nearly nothing, but Indeed. what a play. And on this T side, Nico's quieted down. I know it is ridiculous to say, like, he's done his work and then some. He's got 23 kills. 
Well, he hasn't really gotten much left that much yet in this second half rolling for him. So that's interesting. Where G2 really relying on him as the driving engine. Can the others step up or what can we expect? Yeah, so it's just oh. an instant. He just barely manages to tag him. He just finds him in the back. It's so ridiculous. Again, no, this is the other thing, though. When you're this far down, maybe sometimes that's what you need to, to try and break the rules just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I get that he would run through if it was, you know, five seconds and you knew for sure if you get the guy pounding the bomb, but there was a little bit more time and it turned out to be the right move anyway. Brilliant stuff. 13 to 6. It is a long road back for NIP, but they've got some stuff that's working for them. Not so much the economy on their side, but G2, on the other hand, they have even less to work with. And they need to build some big rounds here where they don't lose too many players, where they really start to feel it. Some good damage on the Jax. He's made his way almost around the corner. Linus and Hampers are holding the archway, though it should be impossible to break through this round. Flash is out. He's trying for a Jax. Wild Deagle shots, and he just dinks Linus. He's down and out of it. Jax, ah, don't, ah. don't be shooting your teammates. Down Not again. Rez is on his own. He's got no one with him. Do now we've talked, again. we've talked a fair bit about Rez and his performance in this tournament. Lobsky's on a flank. But this would be another good round for Rez to prove himself. There's the flank shot. Now Nico was reading it. 50 seconds still. Are they going to go back? A little bit confusing here for G2. You can tell they're not quite sure. Another good kill for Plopsky. Yeah, and this is the smart move. Play for time. Don't let them get the refrag. Just, just wear them down in the middle. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. It's like a boa constrictor just closing in at that point. You've got so few options. And even if, yeah, you think you, make, you can make the mad dash, doesn't matter. Hampus is here, and that smoke goes down, and your stomach is just going to drop now. If you're G2, you kind of just have to gut it out, go through the smoke, and hope that you're going to be there in time. Yep, Hunter made the cross already. What a timing against Damanek, who was jumping up, and now there's trouble. Oh, Molotov on top, Hunter! Oh. Forced out of it. Nexus coming through CT spawn, but that is not going to help them. They need to get these kills right now, G2, if they want this round. 10 seconds on the board, no bomb plan yet. They can't even find the bomb site at the moment, and the spray is through, rest with the shot, and next he cannot win the round. He's out of time. All they have to do is ignore him. It's gonna be 13 to seven. NIP are clawing their way back slowly, but surely in this game. They're getting closer and closer. They're almost within striking distance here. Couple of rounds, and no bomb plan again for G2. This is truly putting a lot of pressure on their economy, where they could have these bonus nades to work with. They could really do a lot of damage. That was a good round for them. Keep in mind, that was a hero AK sort of scenario. And so we do have a buy round coming up here for G2. But... If but. not for Plopsky, that's a one versus four round for Rez. Yes. So he has got to be so thankful. And he even got spotted. That flank actually got red. Now we're going to see another banana attempt here. Hampus with a good kill. But Nico on the follow-up. The nades are landing on top of him. And he is nearly dead already. The Molotov. Oh, wow. It spreads in spite of the smoke and burns Nico alive. Three versus four now. That that could have gone any which way. That <laughs> banana like. play, man, it's so chaotic. It feels like it can go either way you're right. And that time it's just Nico getting caught in the crunch. They try to pull a fast one G2 and really change up the pace, get aggressive on banana, which is hard to do. This is why you see them throw all of these grenades into banana, because it makes it so difficult to get up there in one piece. Nico hardly had a shred of health left by the time he got up to half wall. And all they have to do is, is not lose Linus at this corner, right? He just has to stay alive. Put up the smoke. Don't get instinct by the AK. You can see Nexus already running for it. Comes charging through, but Popsky's on the other side. And the defense, it will hold this round. Hunter, the one versus four. Plenty of time. And this is where you want to see some of that experience as well that's on that NIP side to calm everybody down. This is where you don't want to make any mistakes. Even a kill right now can make a big difference down the road. So just. Deep breaths, lock him in, and don't let him escape. There's device with a kill on the orb. It's 13 to 8. And we're starting to really get nip in the, into the game, Anders. This is not the first time that they managed to chain together CT side rounds on Inferno. This is their better half by far. By far. It was so important that G2 have a strong T side because this is what Nip are capable of here. And now G2 are the ones who are just getting pummeled. Not even bullied, necessarily. That's the worst part. At least, you know, G2, they were kind of bullying them. They were really trying to charge them. Nip are just playing super solid CS. They aren't even really taking many risks. It just feels like G2 don't quite have what it takes to handle them here on this T side. And it is such a hard recovery when you go down that, that low in the beginning. You can see the energy just kind of left the room for a while there when NIP were getting oh, yeah. beat up. So, 
So to recover from that in the space of a half, definitely not easy. Rez, good lineup here. He's gonna get the double kill. They did lose device on the other side, but still a favorable trade for them. And that AK on the other side, or the Orc on the other side rather, is gonna be hard, I think, for G2 to pick up. They're gonna try and flash their way through. Rez, even while blind, does a pretty good job of staying behind the pillar so that he doesn't get straight taken down. And now Nico and Nex up two versus four. Hard to find anything in this round, without a doubt. Nico is hoping for a mistake up there in the apartments if somebody walks across the bomb site, but he's kind of going to give up on that. Oh, Harding Gift. Clever. Chase him out of there. 50 seconds. No closer to getting a bomb plant. Yeah, especially now that Nico's been spotted. There he is. Gets a body shot off on Rez. That's not going to be good enough. By the way, quad kill for Rez in this round. So, again, we said he's been a bit quiet, but... You know, if he could come up with an ace here, I'd say that's a pretty good way to get into the quarterfinal. Flashing his way over, Nexus on the other side, and Rez goes for it, and there's the ace! Picking it up with a headshot. It might have been against pistols, but I guarantee you anything, anything you can do to get yourself mentally in this game. Oh, dude, with these fans as well, man, this is huge for an IP. That took him from 10 to 15 kills. Simple math, even I can do it. But um, that puts him on top of the scoreboard for NIP. He just surpassed everyone. The pressure is on. Madag is actually having a bit of a chat here. Tactical timeout calls, and so he's able to talk. The coaches cannot interact with the players at all. Only during tactical timeouts can they interact with the players. That includes touching them. Like, you know, tap on the shoulder, any of that sort of stuff. Yep. Prohibited. But yeah, NIP now. The fans are starting to feel it. They know what is possible. NIP are not out of this fight yet. Replay from the last round here. Rez just holding his own. Beautiful ace from him. And it's terrific to see because he was catching a little bit of flag, deservedly so. He's kind of had a little bit of a hit and miss sort of sure. scenario this yeah. tournament. I agree. Yeah, we can't really just brush that aside, especially because of what a talent Rez is. You want to see him play up to that level all of the time, and especially right now. 13 to 9. It is now only a four round gap. And G2 on the other side, I don't know if they're feeling really. There's not panic yet, but there's going to be some nerves starting to show as well. They must start to feel like, why can we just not find the last couple of rounds? All we need is a good clean entry. All we need is a kill on Archer or on, or on Quad here. And maybe we can find our way through. They've taken that top mid control lightning fast this round. Actually, that is so speedy that they just take a peek through the smoke. They know what's on the other side. Plopsky's holding Banana on his own. And Nico, he sees the opportunity, but he gets taken down. Plopsky, that is, um, it's just one kill. But if it goes the other way, the round gets blown up for, for, for NIP. Yeah, and G2 are the ones running away with it now. G2 are slowly kind of stumbling towards that B site. And it's a question of whether or not they're going to be able to commit as the fresh smoke goes down at 50 seconds. Unless they pop through here, it's not going to leave them a whole lot of time to maneuver with. And they are deciding to just go for it here, Anders. There's an opportunity for Linus to ruin them. Beautiful ball top of timing. Yeah, that's so sick. It's set up really nicely. Oh, and a flashbang as well. 35 seconds. They all peak at the same time. Linus with a big double and Hampus is there to help out. And that leaves Amanek on his own. One versus three with a bomb to plant as well. There's almost no point in faking it too much. At that point, just try and go for it. The longer you wait, the more are going to show up. And it's device down from CT spawn to take down Amanek. 13 to 10. The crowd is absolutely getting behind them. And you can feel... That energy that was lost in the beginning, silence here at the Vici Arena, it's back. Oh yes, double digits now for NIP. Now it's real. Now it is real between these two teams. Double digits is a serious business. Nip are so close to closing the gap. And to think it was a 12-3 uh, half in favor of G2. G2 have succeeded in picking up a single solitary round in this second half. Utter shutdown compared to the bullying that they were doing to NIP in the first half. Semler, what are we watching here? They're just rushing in. Rez is at the corner, blind, and still gonna get a lot of damage, nearly a triple kill. In fact, Device trying to show up as well. Hampus battling for his life inside of the bomb site, and the pistol out. Device still getting kills, and it's bought so much time. More of the CT side is showing up. Nico and Nex are in a lot of trouble in here, and Klopski. That aim of his has rung true for this entire second half, and Nico gonna get shot in the back as well. It's another round for an IP. 13 to 11. And man, this feels good for an IP, and this is going to feel utterly horrible for G2 at this point, because every mistake they make, every good round that goes Nip's way, the fans are blowing up, and this is just so 
brutal, especially after that first half. It's just gonna be eating away at you. Yeah, so sick. He did so much damage in the beginning there, Rez, but honestly, for me right now, just in a, just a DI test, Red, so, so far, Plopski's probably the MVP for NIP in, in, in the game so far. He's been having so many important kills. Nice boost coming in, and Nico again with the headshot. They're trying to see if they can find Plopski. If they do, that should be the round. This should be a 14 for G2. It's a little bit of a spray coming through. Molotov's on the other side. They're trying to make the jump, but Hampers, he's sticking around. There's surely no way. I don't think this is worth it even if you want to be the hero here. Rez is kind of starting to show up as well. Another nade to land on top, but it's not going to kill anyone. And I think now it's probably better to try and move away. Devices on the other side with the AWV. I don't even mind that they stick around to try to do anything because yes. again, it's a major quarterfinals. You want any window of opportunity to get back in any round, but it's too much this time. I think Hampers, in their minds, well, I think in their minds they're also thinking if we can get them to spend money. Sure, G2 yeah. don't have money. They're just buying out every time. And so if you can get a few kills here, maybe G2's buy is weaker and you just get to go back on the run again. Now, I thought maybe he was going to try and injure it, but that's too much, too much to ask for. He's going to get a kill. That's not bad at all. It's a 14th round for G2. They take one more step. They're almost at the finishing line. That's right, Anders. There haven't been too many of those bomb explosions up here while you've been up here. <laughs> the flames are pretty hot. The flames are pretty hot. Is, yeah. You can feel it. Throw back to Clusen Poker 2015, man. Seriously, you get those flames going. But I think we're going to get a little bit of a breather here once again, where the teams are trying to keep it cool, calm, and collected. Both of them. Right now, G2 know that they've let this slip through their fingers. Yeah, the chance for a, for a quick victory. And on NIP's map pick as well. Oh, what a great beginning it would have been for G2 yes, if they indeed. could have just wiped them out. It can still happen. But everything is a struggle right now. And NIP, if nothing else, they have woken up in, in a big way. 16 on Rez, 16 on Plopski, 60 on Device, 15 on Hampers. That, and Linus is an 18. He's not that far behind either. But what a brilliant start to this round. Nico, and you, he knew he saw the opportunity instantly. He knew if I win that second fight, it is done. We win the round. Terrific work to get things going here. And now, the, well, the stride continues for NIP. Hampus with Molly down bottom. Makes you think, if you're G2, are they going for the aggro mid push or not? Not going to see anything now that they've cleared it out. Goes through the smoke, takes down Linus. Painful loss there. That Forces is so the scary. from Hampus over to B. Oh, wait, Rez, they're all in front. He's going to get flashed in, but they bump into each other, and that stopped him. He couldn't go for the swing. Device on his own with an AWP inside of the A-bomb site. Tries for the shoulder. Will take down Hunter, but they're just going to keep throwing people at him. He's not going to have any peace in here. Molotov actually not going to connect. That's a bit awkward, but Nico will find an angle to take him down anyway. And now the question is, do you go for this? They have a little bit of money on Hampers. He's going to win the fight against Nexa. And now you definitely will go for it. You need to get that bomb planted immediately. Two versus right two. Right now. Oh, Plovsky nearly sprayed down. Nico, that's just the experience. He didn't see that. He just felt it. Smoking off on one side, trying to isolate the fight against Nico, but he is everywhere and doing all of the work. Plovsky on his own, and he will have to back on out. There's nothing he could really do. Nico with the triple, and G2 going to find a 15th round almost at the end here. He's got 29 kills, Nico. Yeah. He's he's a god. Triple kill, a triple round. I mean, triple kill round when his team started to really need it most when they had to put an end to this comeback from NIP. Nico decides enough is enough. And that is going to be map point for G2 in a couple of seconds here. And well, Plopsy is going to be able to save. There's still a little bit of money on Hampus. He's got enough to be able to drop a couple of guns. Device should be able to afford to get an AWP and it's really just going to be all or nothing now for NIP. They have to play perfectly from here on out. And CT side Inferno, when you don't have all the nades, you don't have everything to shut down the early aggression, it's so hard to get a run going. Oh, they go for double AWP? I mean, it's been known to work. That's, that's just good timing. Man. Crazy, crazy performance from Nico here to open up the quarterfinals with... 27th round, double up on the CT side. Pushing it all in on this one, NIP. This is either going to work or they're going to end up losing their own map pick, and that would be devastating. 
A little bit of banana control. Oh, nearly catching it, but the Molotov will slow them down. That would have been dangerous. He probably could have ran that corner and tried to catch him with the AK, but he gets slowed down instead. HE doesn't go into CT either, man. This is just these nade games going on in Banana. Who's throwing which smoke to cancel out? Which Molly followed by an HE? It's all over the place. Utter chaos, and yet somehow G2 are able to thread the needle and get top of Banana control. And this can set them up for a straight up pop onto the B bomb site. All five gathered up, and this is it. The golden opportunity here for G2. Hampus hits the shot. Big kill. Nico's down and out, and Jax is already low from earlier. So trading two for nothing is exactly the start they need here in IP to try and get a bit closer. Are they going to go for the boost? It seems like it. And Amanek, he's trying to plant the bomb, but he might get interrupted. Oh, a missed shot. Hampus nearly shooting him afterwards, even through the smoke. That is a really, really close one. But they get the bomb plant down. Three versus five here to try and win the map, G2. They're not in a bad position. They have a smoke that they've just put down again towards CT spawn, so that'll push them over towards construction. Jack's just playing right at the edge, and he sees it coming. What a great kill, but it'll be traded at the very least. Amanek boosted up, and Hunter playing close to CT spawn. They need to go right now, NIP. Rez will get one. Hunter with the spray, and that's it!